Good morning to you. You are tuned into the Preterist Power Hour, a ministry provided to you through the Power of Preterism Network, which you can learn more about and access a host of our resources at powerofpreterism.com. Uh, we thank you again for being a part of our session. Just to quickly introduce myself, I'm Mike Miano. I am the pastor here of the Blue Point Bible Church, and I serve as the director of the Power of Preterism Network. And it's always a blessing and a privilege to uh, be a part of these sessions and all the different uh, ministries that we've provided through the Power of Preterism Network, which we will talk about here briefly in a moment uh, after my co-host introduces himself and leads us in a word of prayer. Edward, good morning to you, brother. Good morning, Pastor. Thank you. My name is Edward Howell. I'm a member of the Blue Point Bible Church, also a board member of the Power of Preterism Network. And at this time, I would like to lead us in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day. Uh, at least here in New York. And um, thank you for the guests that, that, will, that we have on and also the listeners, you know, specifically uh, Dr. Robert Pike and John Noe. Uh, uh, welcome having them uh, today with us. And also uh, I, I pray that you bless uh, Dr. Uh, Robert and Pastor in their uh, teaching today that it will come with clarity of thought, proper focus that, we, that will provoke us to conversation and develop a fellowship and that we may you know, possess in uh, seeking, searching, studying, improving all things uh, uh, according to God's will. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, brother, for a good and hearty prayer there. Uh, again, it is Testimony Tuesday, and if you didn't know, you are tuned into the Preterist Power Hour. And uh, you know, now that we're prayed in, I'm excited to kind of just get us into some discussion this morning. Edward already let you know uh, that Dr. Robert Pike, Dr. John Noe are both here with us in our discussion. Uh, obviously, the, this morning, our focus is to talk with Dr. Rob Pike about his testimony, about preterism, about uh, you know, what God is showing him, leading him in, and teaching him at this very moment. And I know that Dr. John Noe continues to be one of those influences and teachers in his life. So again, just a great session ahead of us. I'm excited to kind of move in on some things. Uh, before we do that, we're just going to share some announcements and some Testimony Tuesday thoughts, if you will. And uh, for me this morning, Edward, I'll tell you, my uh, Testimony Tuesday thoughts are based upon what we read there in uh, Matthew chapter 5, uh, the Beatitudes, and Jesus says, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, uh, they will be filled. And ultimately, what we see in Matthew chapter 6, verses 33 through 34, where we're encouraged to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be given to us. So if you notice, if we seek his righteousness, we hunger and thirst for it, it's provided, which again, hopefully we know it has been provided. Uh, th this is something we have, not something we're waiting for. It's something we're you know, working in and living out uh, as we experience all things provided to us through Christ Jesus. Uh, we've been moved out of that old covenant hoping and waiting mentality and into this relishing our identity in uh, expressing the power of uh, what Christ has provided. Again, a past understanding, often what we call preterism. That being said, just really looking at these verses this morning, God's promise is that if we seek these things, and obviously we know we've come to know them through Christ, that they're provided amply. They're given to us. Uh, you know, those who seek righteousness will be filled. Those who seek the kingdom and his righteousness. Again, what's important and of note, I believe here this morning, what's really been weighing upon me is the fact that uh, we must get right what kingdom and what righteousness we're seeking after. Uh, you, you know, and that's important if we want to be appropriately uh, relishing uh, the things that we have. So uh, just again, his kingdom, his righteousness, seek it and it will be, will be provided. And if I may just share one last thought would be a quote from Alan Bondar, who wrote the book, The Journey Between the Veils, a book we've mentioned here on the Preterist Power Hour a couple of times more recently. And I love what he said uh, in that book. I shared this on Time Hop or I shared this on social media about four years ago and my Time Hop let me know uh, that I posted it. And it said this just this morning. With the veils removed, again, talking about that temple system, that picture there that God had provided. With the veils removed and the glory of Christ unveiled, we can now stand in the light of the sun and behold the beauty of our Lord forever. And I think that is, you know, a very important part of, if not the most important part 
of what we understand. Uh, I've been focused in a lot on the glory of the Lord. Uh, Second Thessalonians chapter one talks about, you know, the goal of the coming of the Lord was that the glory of the Lord would be found in the church. The church would be glorified in Christ. And ultimately the believers would marvel at what God has done. And I believe everything, and I hope everything I just said causes you to marvel at what God has provided regarding his righteousness and his kingdom, uh, ultimately a testimony to his glory. What do you think, brother? What are you testifying to the glory of God about this morning? Well, to piggyback on what you had just uh, said, is that I was thinking about how the Pharisees asked Jesus about the kingdom, and Jesus said, the, the, the kingdom is in your midst. That's right. Actually, it was standing right in front of them. And uh, did Jesus fail in bringing the kingdom? Of course not. You know, so he brought the kingdom, you know, especially when the uh, temple had gone down. All things related to the end of the age had been fulfilled at that, at that given time. So right. we're living in the kingdom, you know, and what we would like to do is bring people in. You know, the, the gates are always open, you know, so we would like to bring people in. That's the healing of the nations and uh, uh, healing of the brokenness, like Jesus had done, you know, the brokenness of, of people, you know, things of this nature, you know. That's right. You know, and again, we, we live in a world that is racked with, you know, brokenness. Let, let's call it what it is. We were just talking about that in our, uh, you know, prior to our session discussion there. And uh, we see it everywhere. We see it everywhere, not only in the United States of America, where we reside, but we also see it in the world. We see it in Ukraine. We see it in, you know, and that's just some of the things that are being amplified. There's so many areas of devastation, of brokenness, of destruction. And our job is to, as the kingdom of God, as those who have set our eyes on things that are above, is to demonstrate that kingdom of righteousness, peace, and joy uh, through the Holy Spirit. And, uh, you know, I think it's important for us to ponder those things. So I'm glad that we're setting our eyes on that. We're understanding it. Once we understand that it's here, it's now, it's not something deferred. It's not something we're hoping for. That opens up a Pandora box, if you will, of opportunity uh, of how we might walk in it and how we might express it. So uh, I'm excited to hear uh, Rob Pike and talk, talk with him about some of the ways that, you know, he's testifying to that in his life and how he sees that ultimately being understood as well. So, uh, you know, again, just praising God this morning for all that he has provided. And uh, some other things I'd just like to bring up real quickly before we enter in on that interview uh, would be if you go to the Power of Preterism blog site, which is powerofpreterism.wordpress.com, you can read our most recent semi-annual meeting uh, minutes, basically. It's a, just an outline of the things we discussed, things that we're working toward with the Power of Preterism Network. Of course, I thank Edward Howell and Jonathan Buttry as serving as board members along with myself of that network and some of the things that we, we talked about that we've accomplished over the last six months, as well as things that we look to you know, accomplish or further accomplish or you know, things that we had hoped to have got, gotten done that we didn't, that we look forward to moving into uh, in the next couple months. So uh, you can go ahead and read those notes by visiting powerofpreterism.wordpress.com and of course accessing the host of resources we've provided over the last six months. Uh, there are some potential changes coming to the Preterist Power Hour. I say potential because we're still kind of working through them uh, to see how we, we, we think this would be appropriate. Uh, some of the things I might wet your senses with right now. Uh, first thing I'd like to encourage folks to uh, let me know of is if you have a favorite podcast, something you listen to that you're blessed by, please reach out to me and tell me about it. Let me listen to it. Let me learn where you're, what you're learning. Let me listen to the things that you're listening to and, and the way that they're bringing forth that truth. Uh, that way I might grow in my, my calling and what I believe in podcasting and so forth. So uh, I know just this weekend, I had opportunity to ask a couple folks, you know, what are your, what are the areas, uh, what are the podcasts you listen to and that you feel blessed by? What are you thinking about? What are you studying? So uh, I ask you to reach out and let me know those that might bless you. And I'm not only talking Christian, you know, if there's podcast, secular podcast that you're blessed by, uh, political, social, uh, just life, self-help, growth, whatever it might be, books that you're reading, let me know. I'd love to listen. So thank you. And uh, that being said, uh, we're looking to do a couple of changes. Well, one thing I'm, I'm looking to go back to is a sort of solo effort of leading the Preterist Power Hour. Uh, the reason being is it affords me uh, more opportunity, a little bit more uh, um randomness to the podcast, as you, uh, you'll understand as I move forward. Uh, that does not mean that I do not welcome and want co-hosts and other uh, people to join with me and my brother Edward to continue to join with me. Uh, what we're looking to do is Monday and Friday will become our days that will have a designated time, which will be 1030, uh, 1030 a.m. Eastern, that is. So that will be the, the podcast that will always be Monday and Friday, Preterist Power Hour. 
However, Tuesday through Thursday, there will be podcasts. However, they'll be at random times. Sometimes they'll include teachings from me. They'll include uh, interviews with other folks. They'll include, uh, you know, undoing of false teachings. They'll include all sorts, sorts of things that further demonstrate the power and the advancement of preterism. So uh, you can look forward to that. We're going to continue live streaming on Facebook. Uh, we're going to also work toward Spotify as an audio, audio podcast and also Google Podcasts. So you can expect to see that kind of rolled out in the next couple of weeks or if not months. And uh, so again, remember Mondays and Fridays are the day that you can join with us. You can zoom in, call in, watch on Facebook Live at 1030 a.m. However, the other days you can join with me and zoom with me if you get the update and you're, you're interested in the conversation. I always encourage it. Uh, but it'll be at more random times than, um, than we're doing now. So again, Monday, Friday, Tuesday through Thursday, sporadic, keep your eye out for updates and more. Uh, you can visit powerofpreterism.wordpress.com to get weekly links and reviews. Uh, that would be the goal. Missional Monday would mark out what we're going to talk about, think about, study through for the week. And then Friday would be our freestyle flashback Friday, where ultimately we're reviewing the things that we we're studying or talking about, uh, and I'm ultimately having the opportunity to hear from others that are studying with me and following along with our study. So look forward to those changes. Uh, that's what's going to happen most likely starting next week. Again, we mentioned potential because we're still working through them, but look forward to those updates being provided. Edward, before I go ahead and uh, bring our uh, guest on the program, is there anything you wanted to say uh, or bring up uh, at this point? I would, I would just like to thank uh, our guests for, uh, for their time. You know, it's a blessing. And I have to leave a little early for lunch. So, All right. hey, well, fair enough. Uh, so, we'll have you here for another 25 minutes. And uh, obviously, uh, we'll welcome some great discussion with Robert Pike uh, this morning. So, that being said, uh, I was going to play a video. I do want to encourage folks, you know, we're going to mention this a couple of times during the program. Visit truthinliving.net. Uh, that's uh, Rob Pike's website. And when you visit, there's a, you know, he has a great introductory video there, excuse me, uh, in regards to uh, his teachings and what his goal is uh, through his teachings. Uh, we're highlighting this morning preterism. However, he has some other great teachings and things that you might want to study out and learn from him about. So uh, I encourage you to visit his website. We're going to mention his YouTube uh, channel and programs as that's how I learned more about his resources, but he has a lot to offer. So I want to encourage you visit truthinliving.net. Watch the video as a great introduction, uh, if not uh, everything that he says this morning. That being said, with no further ado, I will unmute Dr. Rob Pike. And uh, we thank you, brother, for taking some time to join with us this morning. you know, perspectives and the cult. He's doing, he said, my Lord and my Somebody showed me that passage of scripture uh, because Jehovah's Witnesses do not believe in the deity of Christ. And so therefore, uh, I thought this is pretty well proof of it. And nobody could answer my question. So that's what triggered me kind of going off the rails for a while. Uh, but and I was and I became a, a Christian in 1983. Uh, I, I got baptized into a, a little church here in Indianapolis called Chapel Hill or Chapel Rock Christian Church. And I was a Christian, although not very seriously committed for the next 15 years or so. And then uh, something got a hold of me and I decided that hey, you know, you're wasting your life. You need to do more. So I, I decided at that time that I was going to be a committed Christian. And I, since I already had a master's degree, I decided I'm going to get my PhD in theology. So I went to, uh, went to grad school, uh, Trinity College and Seminary. And I spent the next five years uh, studying coursework well the coursework only took me two years but it took me three years to write my dissertation which was uh, entitled the a comparison of the Arian heresy with the doctrine of God taught by Jehovah's Witnesses and uh, <clears throat> then I had to do a defense of my dissertation and that was uh, a test too but when I got through all that so in 2003 they said okay you can you can use the title of Dr. Pike now, which 
I only use that on specific occasions because uh, to me that honors man and not God. So I don't I don't use that title very often, but I do show it on my videos just just to give me some credibility and on my books. <clears throat> but that's how it all started. And uh, I, I was a dispensationalist, like I said, for about 15 years, actually a little bit longer than that, maybe. Um, but in 2011, after I got my doctorate degree and, and when I retired from my job, which I was a welding engineer, the last job was for, at Honda Corporation over here in Greensburg, Indiana. When I retired from that job, uh, I went to a Bible study down in Florida where I, I, I go back and forth from Indiana to Florida in summer to winter. And uh, I was in a Bible study there and there, it was on the book of Revelation being taught by a dispensationalist. And I thought, this really makes absolutely no sense. The timelines are all mixed up. They keep running back and forth. They can't explain certain passages. And I thought to myself, for a guy that has a PhD in theology, I really don't know any other system of eschatology other than dispensationalism. So I started studying. And uh, then it picked up that First Thessalonians 5.21, test all things, hold fast what is good. And I started through a, a whole list of books and videos and discussions and everything else, uh, <clears throat> which I could go into in great detail. But in the final analysis, uh, I ended up looking at several different books like Ken Gentry's the Olivet Discourse Made Easy, R.C. Sproul's The Last Days According to Jesus. Then I went to the Parousia by uh, Russell, uh, Behind the Veil of Moses by Brian Martin. I started looking at, at Don Preston's uh, books and videos, and I started studying things from John Noe, like Unraveling the End, which uh, all these are excellent publications. John Noe's book is outstanding, Unraveling the End. And I started actually uh, doing videos, and, and my wife said, you know, you need to document all this stuff or you're going to forget it. Well, she was right, so I started writing books, my first of which was A God's Promise of Redemption, A Story of Fulfilled Prophecy, and then I, I moved on from there, all of which are listed on my website, so you can see get all of those books on there. That's a short history of uh, where I've been. Amen. Yeah, you, you said a lot and a lot of good stuff there. I appreciate your, uh, you, you know, your your desire to walk worthy of First Thessalonians five twenty one that prove all things ethic. There, uh, praise God for that. And of course, I appreciate your humility uh, in talking about your PhD and in talking about you know your studies. Uh, however, as someone who has watched quite a few of your videos and has been blessed by not only the the teachings, but what I've noticed watching your videos is that you know, you put thought and care into how the truth is being expressed. Obviously, that's one of our, uh, you know, we've heard that sentiment often. It's not what you're saying, how you're saying it. And uh, I, I appreciate, you know, Rob, I really do. I appreciate the way that you've put care into the way you produce the videos. And, uh, you know, for example, just watching one of your more recent videos on the last days, uh, you, you know, you offered up a teaching of from years ago, which I thought was neat. And, uh, you know, then you jumped in and kind of provided some clarifying thought, you know, to help others understand, and then went back to the video, which uh, just last week in our semi-annual meeting, uh, somebody had brought up that, you know, that they desire for us to do that in our, our stuff and our teaching. So uh, it just shows that some great teachings are already out there doing that. So Rob, I, I appreciate that. You know, it says a lot about your care and your desire for people to learn the truth. And uh, Well, thank you. I, uh, I just finished a video the other day. I, I'm going to start using uh, Julie McCallan. I don't know whether you know Julie or not, but uh, she actually helped me to learn the truth about fulfilled eschatology many years ago when I was struggling with whether I was a partial preterist or a full preterist or uh, anything more. And, and she helped me learn a lot of things, believe it or not, uh, that was, was very beneficial to me. And she actually wrote the uh, the introduction to my book, uh, which was God's Promise of Redemption. She, she wrote the foreword in that book. So uh, 
she's going to start doing videos with me and and i'm i made one it hasn't been released yet i'm going to release it in a couple of days and uh, she will help me quite a bit with this and i you know I, I really like to bring other people into this because for many years i've just been a talking head on there and uh, yeah it, it it does have merit but i think it works better as a discussion i had chris maskey on there for a few times he's the one that contacted me and wanted to, to start doing this because he had watched my videos and he had learned so many things that he totally dispelled dispensationalism. And uh, he had 34,000 viewers on his website, which is, uh, I can't think of the name of it right now. Um, Last Call to Calvary. Yes. yes. And he, uh, so he started doing these videos with me on there. And uh, so hopefully we'll be doing some more again sometime in the future, but started out really good. And I know that he is a believer in, in uh, fulfilled eschatology. Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I definitely uh, appreciate it. That's how I first came across your teachings was through Chris Maskey's The Last Call to Calvary YouTube page. Of course, you know, the videos are still available. So I do want to encourage folks uh, write that down we'll make the link available for others on our website and uh you know and then of course you could go over to truth and living where you've continued to do those teachings and i know more recently you had a gentleman named jeff on the program and you were doing yeah stuff. jeff moore yeah jeff moore yes he was on there with me too all right good deal and you know again just mentioning some names here for folks if they want to you know go ahead and listen to some new people and others that are learning uh about and teaching the thoughts of preterism uh Julie McAllen, I have to say, you know, I know who she is. I've seen her on Facebook. Um, I have to uh, reach out to her. This has been a fairly male dominated uh, program when it comes to our guests. So uh, it'd be nice to uh, welcome on some uh, female guests and uh, Julie might be a, a perfect person for another interview. So thank you for bringing her up. Well, the interesting, the, the interesting thing about that is that Julie was also a Jehovah's Witness. Now, she wasn't raised as a Jehovah's Witness, but she got into the cults uh, through a door-to-door -door contact. And then later on, she discovered the same thing I did, of course, that it was actually false religion. And uh, <clears throat> they don't believe in so many things that, that are disgusting. But the thing about it is, the worst part about it is the shunning. And and I I know the reason now that they do the shunning. It's not the, for what they say. The reason they do it is because when pe they start talking to their relatives who have gotten out of the organization, they realize that, hey, you know, I need to get out of it too. So <laughs> that's what they have done. They've cut everybody off and, and kept them from contacting their relatives. And so therefore they shun very strongly anybody who has gotten out of the religion, especially if if they haven't been baptized, they can't do it because they don't have a hold over them. But if they've been baptized, they say, well, you were a, a true believer and now you're apostate. That's what they do. Yeah, that's a shame. You know, it is. It's a shame. And obviously, there's a lot of talk that needs to be had about that, about church discipline and healthy, unhealthy church discipline in that regard. Um, you, you know, that brings me to two things I, I'd like to say in that regard uh, with you, Rob, would be uh, the first thing, obviously, we can appreciate. Uh, I know a lot of Jehovah Witnesses who have come to the knowledge of full preterism. And uh, I think the reason being is that there is that uh, prove all things ethic within the Jehovah Witness community. I know myself, uh, you know, I, I've always appreciated having some discussion, but I, then uh, you also mentioned a cult uh, where you can welcome good discussion, but if somebody has that cult mindset, uh, the discussion's always going to go back to uh, their preconceived notion and, and discussion. So, uh, you know, I praise God that you know, many of the folks that I know that have come to the knowledge of fulfillment, um, that they've been able to kind of have that paradigm shift and move away from that. Uh, that did lead me to ask a question. I know, uh, or I believe you live in Indiana. That's why we had the joy of having John Noe with the same uh, area code there calling in. And um, if, if that's true, I was curious, do you attend a, a local church? What does your, your local gathering look like uh, in your life? Hey, 
Hey, Rob, I want to let you know, unfortunately, sorry to cut you off. Uh, I want to let you know that for some reason, the audio is not coming in that clear. It might be where you're standing or, or something, uh, but not able to okay. hear you. Let me try again. Is that better? Yes, much better. So sorry, if you could start over. It was a little fumbled there uh, as far as what you were saying. Okay, uh, I, I was attending a local church here, but because of uh, my, my beliefs, I had a discussion with the pastor and he sort of disinvited me, which is uh, somewhat common. And I know John has experienced this several times. And so uh, as of right now, the only thing I'm attending is, is John Miller's Bible study on Thursday. And then on Sundays, of course, I do watch some programs, uh, and, and including the church that I do go to still in Florida, which is New Day Christian Church. Although I've had some discussions there with that pastor. Uh, he still welcomes me, but he is not on board with my uh, things that I talk to him about. And I think it's probably because he's got one of the most famous pastors as his father, who's a distant socialist, and his name's Bob Russell. Hmm. Uh, they, he used to have a big Christian church in uh, Louisville, Kentucky area, about 17,000 members. Hmm. And now he's retired, but he still does a lot of work uh, with pastors. Yeah, yeah, I know there tends to be that uh, that area where people don't want to get into the eschatological discussion or uh, even state agreement because of popularity or anything like that. Uh, you know, it just it's a call for humility in the body of Christ, and especially within those that call themselves church leaders. Uh, you know, there's just a need for humility. And, uh, you know, I know right now in a lot of circles, a common discussion is Creflo Dollar had just come out. And, you know, while I completely disagree with a lot of his teachings, not just his teaching on tithing, uh, you know, I appreciate the fact that he uh, he came out and, and admitted honestly that his teachings were wrong and erroneous in regards to the tithing of the old covenant upon contemporary believers, you know, and, and uh, just expressed, you know, I, I appreciate the expressed humility, though many might try to find uh, reasons for the humility or what, what, whatever it might be. I just appreciate that. And it demonstrates further need for humility in the body of Christ. Yeah, you know, I, and I really think there's a lot of these pastors, and I, I'm sure you agree, but they know that, uh, that eschatology is fulfilled, but they, they don't want to come out and say it because they're losing membership or losing their job or something. I would agree. And unfortunately, we're still getting a little bit of that, that uh, fuzziness there with the speech. So I'm not sure maybe, uh, you know, maybe it's location or maybe it's us too. I know, I don't know if my internet's a little out, but just want to let you know, I did hear you though. And I think, uh, you know, there's again, a, quite a few different reasons for, uh, I think the preterist community, and I'm sure you would agree with me. And I know Dr. John Noe would agree as well. Uh, the preterist community has done a not not a so good job, let's just say it nicely here, uh, with helping people understand what it means to live in the kingdom of God today. And what, oh, amen to that. you, you know, oh, that, John's a big proponent of the kingdom of God. He's, he's really uh, got me on board with this, with all he's been talking about, because this is the message of Christ. He said right. to proclaim the kingdom of God. He didn't say to make disciples of the nations. That's a mistranslation of uh uh, Matthew twenty twenty eight. Uh, it's supposed to be disciple the nations, and you're supposed to disciple the nations about the kingdom of God. Amen. Absolutely. Uh, you, you know, Edward, I know you're here, and I want to go ahead and give you a moment if you wanted to jump in. Uh, we're we're talking about some salient topics here. Uh, anything you wanted to uh, jump in and make a comment about and talk with uh, Rob about? No, I just. Wanted to uh, kind of piggyback on what you guys are saying about the kingdom is that, you know, our job is to walk in it and, you know, to show God, to show uh, the marvelous things that God is doing and has done. And, you know, through testimony, you know, of being victorious because, you know, many people, you know, even in a Christian uh, way, uh, they, they have that defeatist mentality of waiting for Jesus to come and fix everything, mm -hmm. which is our job. This is why he, you know, he had come and, you know, uh, he has sent the comforter, you know, to give us that strength and that power, you know, and he, he's giving everything to the church, basically, 
everything pertaining to uh, life and godliness. Good godliness? Uh, yes. Anyway. You're right. Yep. Yes. So, to life and godliness. So it's, it's for us to, you know, not only heal the nation, but to, to fix the things that need fixing. You know, it's to be found in the church. That's right. That's right. Again, I, I believe that's what Second Thessalonians 1 really brings out. Uh, you know, I do want to encourage folks to Blue Point Bible Church. I have the privilege of preaching there, and I've been really diving in on some of these kingdom-minded topics, uh, ultimately where the, where the people of God find their strength, how they demonstrate the strength of God, uh, and, you know, a lot of these, uh, what I think is important, you know, how we think about the things of God, and, uh, you know, I've brought out many different uh, sayings and ways to express that, so I do want to encourage folks, you can visit the Blue Point Bible Church on YouTube. Just this past Sunday, I focused on the kingdom of God, and obviously, you uh, you know, many had focused on America for their, their topic, and I brought up America because we're Christians in America. Uh, we have a role to play here in this country, just as the Christians in Ukraine, the Christians in uh, Palestine, the Christians in Israel, uh, wherever it might be, we have a role to play in this, this picture. So, uh, Rob, you know, I'm curious to hear. Just real fast, what I wanted to, to follow up on as far as how to live in the kingdom is, you know, possessing the things of like second, second Peter one, uh, and also uh, Galatians five, right. and also you know how God said you know think of the things above. That's right. You know, and the renewing of our minds on these things, you know, that we may possess and increase in these things, and in that way, you know, you will walk in the kingdom, walk in the spirit, and not fulfill the deeds of the flesh. Desires of the flesh. Right. Amen. Well said, brother. Amen. Rob, you know, you might have some thoughts there. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. And if I also might ask you, uh, you know, here we are in this fulfilled truth. Uh, we're in the kingdom of God. What are some things that you're studying and maybe you're hoping to help others uh, better understand in regards to the kingdom of God? Well, uh, like I said, that Bible study that I attend every week is, is very important. We're right now going through the book of Acts and, uh, so uh, with John, and he's, he always brings out a lot of good points, and, and we have a nice discussion. But I'm also studying um, the book of Revelation, as always. I always go back to that and start going through that again, just to make sure that I've got everything right. I did write the book, uh, God's, uh, The Lamb of God Victorious, The Keeping of the Revelation Promise. And uh, it's, it's always a good thing to go back through there and keep going through it because you find out more information uh, the more you go. Hmm. And then also my, my uh, work uh, with Jehovah's Witnesses has been a high point in my life. And I wrote this book recently called Jehovah's Witnesses, Are You in the Truth or Are You Living a Lie? And one of the things I do in that book is show them the counterfeit Bible that they're using and how they have just made some very slight, almost undetectable changes in wording that uh, shows that it's, it's something that, <laughs> that agrees with their faith, even though it doesn't. Like, for example, John 1 1. It said, everybody knows that John 1 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Well, they add in there the Word was a God. Mm -hmm. But then, on the other hand, they'll say that there's only one God, and that's Jehovah. But at the same time, they will have a verse like that in there. That's just one example. And, and I, that video that I put, uh, video number one on Jehovah's Witnesses, has gotten more views than any other video that I've, that I've put on, on my uh, website and, and my page of uh, YouTube. So that's that's kind of some of the things that I'm working on. Plus, I, now that I'm working with Julie, I'm going to be doing these videos every week. I'm writing the video script. We uh, go over the video script. We present it, which I have done also with Chris Maskey and Jeff Moore. And uh, we just got to keep getting the word out. I mean, that's that's the bottom line. The kingdom of God is where we're at. We are living in the kingdom of God. Even though it's not perfect, that's what the healing of the nations is for. You know, it's we need to be healing the nations uh, with our words and with our deeds. And the kingdom of God is is 
on the earth and it's in heaven and that and when we die we actually don't die we just pass from one existence to the other and we got to get that message out because we're not going to have a situation where we got jesus coming back to the earth you don't he's not coming back anyhow because he's already here he's, he's omnipresent he's not coming back to the earth to set up a earthly kingdom that's going to be having animal sacrifices again i think as uh, i've heard john say and many others that's probably the biggest heresy of the christian church is saying that the animal sacrifices are going to once again be presented yeah <laughs> unfortunately that's a horrible understanding of everything that's going on in the new testament <laughs> uh, you know it nullifies the the promises of god it goes back on the greater promises, the greater glory that has been manifested through the new covenant. So yeah, it, it is a very ugly teaching, a heretical teaching that has an influenced the body of Christ uh, in that regard. So uh, not only has it deferred the kingdom, but it deferred the kingdom and then created a reverse to the, the, the former glory, <laughs> you know, to look at second Corinthians three through five, you know, strange, a strange teaching indeed. Well, Rob, you know, I have to thank you. I, I, one of my questions I was going to ask you was how often can we learn from you? And you mentioned there that you're going to work toward weekly, and maybe that's what you've already been doing, uh, weekly videos. Uh, I think that's a blessing. I want to encourage folks to write that on your calendar there, that each week you can expect and be blessed by a teaching from uh, Rob Pike and, and hopefully soon Julie McAllen as well. And I'll look forward to that. And what we're looking to do is provide a we call it Preterist Week, you know, the Preterist Weekends and the Preterist Week. And what we're going to do is just everybody that's been a part of our, our ministry, uh, Dr. John Noe, yourself, uh, we're going to highlight your resources. So if they're on Monday or Tuesday, we're going to have them and kind of outline a week of study, sort of like a radio program would, uh, you, you know, how they've outlined the schedule. And we're going to have that available for folks. So we might tell them, you know, one of the weekly resources you can look into would be following yourself and uh, many others that have been a part of our, our program here. Uh, just giving folks the opportunity to be blessed by your resources. So thank you for answering that. And uh, again, I'm blessed by being here with you. So uh, that being said, I wanted to just give you a moment here. If you had, uh, we mentioned your YouTube channel, Truth and Living. We mentioned the website, truthandliving.net. You do have a host of books available for folks that they can find at the website. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to share before I unmute some mics and let others join in on our conversation here for a moment? Well, uh <clears throat> I, I think that uh, John Noe's program that he has on YouTube also greater than we believe is an excellent resource. Uh, and he has been more faithful lately in making weekly videos. He puts one out every week. So that's a good resource, but you, you're probably going to unmute him and talk with him a little bit anyhow, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, we just got to keep going, keep announcing the kingdom of God and keep uh, getting people to understand that uh, we got to test all things. Hold fast what is good, First Thessalonians 5.21. That's right. Amen. You know, amen, Rob. I thank you, brother. And, you know, you brought out some really salient points today. Uh, three notes I took. Well, I took down a host of notes because I was following your testimony there. However, uh, three things that I really marked out that I'm highlighting from our interview this morning is that First Thessalonians 5.21 ethic prove all things, hold fast to that which is good, abstain from that which is evil, wicked, however you might define uh, that understanding there. Uh, and we truly live in a world where we need to abstain from the wickedness around us, the wicked mindsets, the wicked paradigms, the wicked perspectives. Dare I, you know, again, there's a host of things that could go under that category, which I know we agree upon. Um, that being said, um, thank you, Rob, for that. Thank you for the prove all things ethic. Thank you for highlighting that we are called to disciple all nations. We are called to, if we really look at the ethic there of baptizing, it's to immerse folks in the things of God. And may we live lives that do that, speak words that do that. And uh, lastly, uh, just to highlight what you said right there, Rob, uh, we have to keep getting the word out. That's you know, the bottom line. And I hope that. Yeah. And, and uh, one more thing is that scripture, Matthew 28, 19, go therefore and make disciples is the way the ESV says it. You know why that's wrong is because we are incapable of making disciples. We can only water and plant. It's God that causes the growth. So that is a mistranslation. It should say disciple the nations. And that's uh, that, that's what our job is. That's right. Amen. 
uh, let him go before us and, you know, and continue to do the work in us. And through that, we see his kingdom manifest. It's all about him. You know, it's all about his glory. Amen. That's why I've been looking at that text there in second Thessalonians one, where it says, you, you know, to, in order that I love that phrase in order that. So it's kind of a summation in order that Christ would be glorified in you speaking there to the Thessalonian church, but I believe to the church universal in that sense, the body of Christ, uh, that Christ would be glorified in you, that you would be glorified in Christ, and that the believers would marvel at the things of God, would marvel at God. Uh, again, I think that's our, our point and purpose, if you will. Uh, that being said, I'm going to unmute some mics and see if anyone has any questions, comments, concerns uh, that they'd like to share with us. Again, we have Vicki here with us and Dr. John Noe, so uh, if you'd like to unmute and maybe say something here to myself or Rob, uh, feel free. And we do encourage, again, we're going to continue to work toward group participation uh, on Mondays and Fridays. Again, you can expect that announcement to be made again on this coming Thursday uh, for our future programs. John, I see you're unmuted. I want to welcome you uh, to our program and uh, invite you to say anything you might like to share. Well, I would like to ask uh, for your guys' comments on something that has really troubled me lately. And I say lately, I, I would suppose within the last 10 or 15 years. Uh, which for me is lately, anyway, uh, is this. Uh, Rob, you mentioned, you know, you used to be involved in the, the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, and you were baptized, and, you know, you swore allegiance to them and so forth. Uh, and that's the whole idea of swearing allegiance. Now, swearing allegiance is taking an oath. Would you agree to that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How, all right, now, now, think about this before you just mouth off on it, okay? How in the world should we Christians be swearing allegiance to a nation that in no way, shape, or fashion can be considered as being one nation under God? That's my question. Yeah. I think that that's, that's a good question, John. <laughs> yeah, amen. amen. Uh, you, you know, I do think that, uh, you know, I'll say this, and it, I preached about this this past Sunday. Uh, I just urge balance. I urge uh, Christians in America to really find balance in what we're pointing to, what we're saying, what we're studying. And, you know, again, if we are swearing, I guess one of my things would be, I do get concerned about what we swear allegiance to. Uh, my, my first and foremost swearing of allegiance would be the kingdom of God. Uh, and then, of course, anything else would have to fall under that paradigm. So I, I hear you, John. And I think that that's an interesting question to ponder. And maybe uh, I'd be interested in wondering what solutions might be offered. Rob? What do you think? <laughs> oh, wow. <clears throat> well, we can't uh, swear our allegiance to a lot of the uh, liberal wokeism that's going on in this world that wants to promote such things that uh, uh, we see advertised daily and weekly. And anytime we turn on the mainstream media, we can't, we just can't do that, you know, and, and be. Uh, of, of the Christian faith of announcing the kingdom of God, because the kingdom of God is is within our midst right now, and it's also heavenly. So we have to be thinking of heavenly things, and that will not include uh, some of the things we see around us. Well, I uh, I travel around in political circles. My daughter ran for uh, uh, state treasurer uh, in the in the recent primary elections, and I was all over the state with her. And every time we go to a political meeting, you know, they stand up and everybody puts their hand on their heart and pledges allegiance to the flag, except for me. And uh, I try to stand in the back of the room so I don't get noticed. But uh, let me give you a pledge and see what you think about this, okay? It's kind of a take off on the regular Pledge of Allegiance. You ready for this? Let's hear it. Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the kingdom of God and to the Lord Jesus Christ for which it stands, one world under God, indivisible in all things with liberty and justice 
grace and mercy, love and peace, power and joy for all. Amen. Wow, could you that's pledge pretty good. To, could you pledge allegiance to that? Absolutely. Yeah, me too. Well, isn't that a whole lot different than pledging allegiance to a flag whose country is no can no longer can be considered to be under God? Well, you certainly have a point, John. Well, you know, are we Christians going to be held to a higher standard or not? Hmm. You know, I would agree with that. I'd say, uh, you know, I know folks that have been saying that for, as you mentioned there, 10 to 15 years. Uh, you know, that this has been kind of a cry, not be, probably longer than that. You know, I think that there's been ills in this country that transcend 10 to 15 years. And, uh, you know, so I, I would agree with that sentiment. Sure. Uh, there's resources, you know, I think from, uh, dare I say, both paradigms of, you know, conservatives, conservatism and conservativism and liberalism uh, that would offer up that sort of sentiment that Christians should be careful about what we pledge allegiance to. Uh, and are we testifying to the kingdom of God or are we testifying to uh, nationalism or, or nations uh, of the world? So that is an interesting discussion, John. I have to admit, I, I, you know, I, I'd welcome it. And I think that it, uh, it's something that needs to constantly be provoked and maybe even broken down into, let's say, because we brought up some you know, conservative, liberal, woke, uh, some might want to talk about ignorance, uh, you know, that these are things that need to be discussed, especially among those that proclaim that the kingdom of God is in our midst. So, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I agree. By the way, um, I have written on this, and since uh, you've, you mentioned some of my books, this won't be totally a shameless promotion, but uh, I, write a, I write a little bit about that on my, in my conclusion to my book, uh, A Once Mighty Faith, which is the subtitle, Reclaiming the Central Teaching of Jesus and Reengaging the Miraculous, uh, in my conclusion titled Turning the World Upside Down Again. And that pledge is uh, pledging allegiance to the kingdom of God is the opening uh, of that uh, conclusion. So just for your information Amen. and for anybody who's interested in, in hearing more about this topic. Absolutely, yes. Uh, you know, that resource that we might get our hands on and uh, study through as it sounds as though it might be a timely discussion. Well, I see that we have Vicki and Richard here with us. I know Richard joined a bit late. I want to go ahead and Vicki, I'm going to unmute your mic one more time. And Richard, I'll unmute yours if you choose to jump in here. We had a great interview with Dr. Rob Pike. And of course, we have Dr. John Noe here with us. And we've been currently just discussing some things, not just, but we've been discussing some powerful things about the kingdom of God and ultimately uh, you know, ways that we need to be considering how the kingdom of God influences our lives living here in America. And, you know, for those that are tuned in from any other country of the world, uh, you know, how you how it might affect your citizenship uh, there as well. Richard, I see you're unmuted. You want to jump in, brother? Uh, just quickly, uh, did the time change? Because usually it's 1130. Did I miss something? I'm no, we, I thought we go live at 1030. Oh, that's, that's right. It was 10 30. All right. I, I've got lost there for a moment. We are, uh, by the way, uh, we are working on some changes that I had announced. I'll mention them here in a moment in closing, uh, but we are working on some changes. But Richard, you're here with us now, brother. Anything you wanted to uh, mention as we're talking? Uh, no, otherwise, you know, I'm trying to catch catch up on the conversation. So I, I won't, because uh, if I start talking, I might, you know, sidetrack where it's been going. So right. <laughs> I'll yeah. listen more to see if I can fit in somewhere. All right. Well, we're actually winding down. So I thank you for that. And I do encourage you to listen to the uh, podcast, listen to the interview, as I know we brought up some things that uh, may be salient for a future conversation. My word of the day today, by the way, is salient. And uh, <laughs> that, that being said, uh, you know, I appreciate you, Rob. I appreciate you, John, for entering in on the discussion here this morning. Vicki, I thank you for listening. Richard, of course, thank you for tuning in. And uh, of those of you that are viewing online, I'm appreciative to your participation. So uh, again, we marked out some things for good study, and also some good things for future discussion. So, uh, you know, please write them down. I know I did. And uh, we'll welcome, you know, John, we might reach out to you uh, after I get my hands on that book and welcome some further conversation uh, in regards to the kingdom of God and necessary uh, ways of implementing that in our national identity, if you will. Rob, thank you for being here with us this morning. I want to go ahead. Hey, and yeah. And 
Hey, I want, I just want to say, uh, thank you for all that you do for the kingdom of God and, uh, what you do at Blue Point Church there and Ed, appreciate what you do. And, and it certainly is a good thing to know that there are people out there proclaiming the kingdom of God, despite the fact that there are some who are proclaiming a future kingdom of God, which is not the real kingdom of God, which already exists and is uh, in process and growing, just like they said with the mustard seed, it's growing bigger every day. Amen. That's right. Again, a beautiful picture of the kingdom of God. Uh, so again, uh, Rob, thank you for your resources. We will be highlighting them and sharing them throughout our blog site uh, for others to be a part of and learn from. Uh, if I might just go ahead and bring us to a close. And also, Rob, thank you for the, the kind thoughts about our ministry and what we endeavor to highlight the power of a fulfilled theology, fulfilled eschatology, if you will, a theology that is ever powerful, ever increasing like that mustard seed you just mentioned. Um, I might mention some brief announcements here. Uh, the first thing I have to say is if you've been looking at my shirt, maybe hopefully you like it here. It's a Blue Point Bible Church t-shirt. You can actually obtain one of these for yourself and support Preterist Ministries by going to preteristvoice.org. Now, I also have to mention this. If you go to preteristvoice.org, uh, you can also get a host of other preterist items and marketing uh, materials, etc. cetera. Uh, the reason I bring this up is one nice and kind thing, Alan Morton, the founder of that ministry, uh, what he's doing this month for the month of July is he's de uh, devoting and donating all of the income that's received by the purchase of those marketing materials to one of three ministries you get to choose, uh, Dr. Don K. Preston's, the Preterist Research Institute, William Bell's, All Things Fulfilled, as well as uh, my ministry here at the Blue Point Bible Church. So if you purchase the materials, all the, the funding goes to the uh, one of those ministries. So I want to encourage you, visit the website, shop around, get a cool Preterist t-shirt, maybe get a Blue Point Bible shirt, Church t-shirt. Uh, we, we, we will be working with him to get some Preterist Power Hour t-shirts made up in the near future. And uh, again, just a great opportunity to support Preterist Ministries and uh, also get yourself some neat uh, marketing material to, uh, to quote Brother Rob here, uh, to get the word out and to get people thinking and talking about fulfilled truth. So preteristvoice.org, we'll be sharing that throughout our social media and different platforms in that regard. I already mentioned to you uh, the changes that are coming here regarding the Preterist Power Hour. That will be Mondays and Fridays will be at 1030 a.m. However, Tuesdays and Thursdays will be sporadic times, sporadic interviews. However, every day there will be an hour of power provided. Uh, we encourage you to keep an eye on our Facebook page, the Power of Preterism Network. Keep an eye on our uh, blog site, powerofpreterism.wordpress.com, and you'll be able to get updates and different resources. So every Monday and Friday, we will be live welcoming guests to join us in discussion, uh, ho hopefully Monday marking out what we're going to study and Fridays ultimately coming together to talk through uh, the things that we studied throughout the week. So uh, a lot of change happening with the Preterist Power Hour, but look forward to what we're going to provide. And uh, we are in a season of fire. Uh, what we call that here at Blue Point Bible Church is a season of fanning the flame of our faith and allowing God to teach us new things, uh, challenge us with uh, in regards to old things. So some resources were mentioned here on the program today. I do encourage you to be asking God for that wisdom uh, in where uh, he might be leading you and what you need to fan the flame of. Uh, that being said, uh, one last announcement I will mention will be uh, we have an upcoming Preterist Pastors Network uh, conference call that's going to be uh, on July 29th. I thought I wrote down the date here. Keep an eye on our social media, July 29th, I believe it is at 8 p.m. Matter of fact, bear with me one moment and I will get you the exact date for those of you that might be writing down notes and want to join with us for that call. Yes, that will be July 29th at 8 p.m. Uh, we're going to have on uh, our network call. We don't host that live through social media. However, we go live on Zoom and call in and we have a, a good time talking among other preterist teachers, leaders, and those that serve in ministry, either as pastors or under any other leadership identity or title. And uh, we welcome you to be a part of that session. Uh, even if you are not a pastor or teacher or leader, uh, and you just want to be a part of uh, these discussions and maybe challenge some of the other leaders in regards to effectivity of what we're doing in demonstrating the fulfilled truth, we welcome you be a part of that study uh, with us. Rob, again, thank you. And at this point, I thank all of you for being a part of our discussion this morning. And I will close this in a word of prayer. Lord God, grant us grace to be faithful witnesses to those we encounter today. May we share your love in a way that sparks others. 
to catch your fire. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless and go in peace.